Yeah. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Coffee Club podcast, episode 79, another Q&A episode. Need I say more? Need I say more. Let's get into it. Huh? Oh, actually, first, little bean shout out. This one, a nice care package from Shari, Shari Sullivan, all the way up in Crash Butte, friend of the podcast, friend of, well, she's a big fan, OAC, team boss, so I met her back in the team boss days, but she's, I believe she's the coach at the Crash Butte High School which would be a pretty nice place to go to school. But pretty she's nice place to live as well. <laughs> pretty nice overall. If you can afford to live there and go to school, you've uh, you've ticked a couple of boxes. So, But she's just awesome, like big fan, spreads a lot of joy through the running world. So thank you very much, very much, Shari, for sending that. She included the... Do you think... I wasn't sure if she included the Thin Mints because we talked about them a few weeks ago, if you remember. And then she sent beans from Camp for Coffee, which is... I think the most popular coffee shop in Crestview, and then also First Ascent, which looks like a lovely bag of beans. And then also she sent some noon. I know that she loves noon with a kind message for Ollie, which is with every Mountain Dew, take some electrolytes. <laughs> Lemon lime noon is better than Mountain Dew. Okay, so I'm going to put the noon in the Mountain Dew. That's what Dew, I was right? going to say. I mean, yeah. that'd be good. I'll just that'd put the noon in the Mountain Dew so then I can, uh, you know, and it'll be extra tackle. fizzy. Tackle two two birds with one stone. I think that's what they say. <laughs> is, uh, is Shari our first ever double double delivery? Because I feel like this is the second time we've I had think she camp has. for coffee beans. I the think The only she the has. only other double delivery people is Morgan's mom and my mom. I think. Oh, true. That's the, the and, that, and those are mom, that doesn't Shari. count though because mums are mums. You know they look after yeah. their boys. But um, she's so looking after us. Shari, that's elite company. You're you're, <laughs> you're, you're, you're up there with our mums. So <laughs> we we appreciate that. Well done, Shari. You've transcended. You've transcended. To <laughs> You've family. transcended. Yeah. So thank you very much. And I also wanted to give a quick little personal shout out for the last podcast. Got a lot of kind comments about the injury comeback, and then also specifically my uh, hives urticaria. <laughs> uh, I guess a lot more people you have a lot experienced of advice it on your hives. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's more common than I thought. Maybe people are just generally don't, people are afraid don't talk to about speak it. out. Yeah, you're gonna so, be you're gonna be a hives advocate. You're gonna be one of those people who's talking at schools and TED talks about hives and yeah. an advocate for it. So I guess great. you know I haven't I I haven't luckily I haven't suffered that much in my life, but now I really do understand the power of speaking out about your problems and then having other people come forward and be able to relate to them. You're gonna get paid gigs. <laughs> Morgan wins the Olympics. Yeah. 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 Speaking gigs is, so, uh, is like, can we talk about hives. your Olympic gold medal, Morgan? No, no, no we're talking about hives yeah. and the awareness of it and the ability to speak out. What but allowed me to get here today was, was my battle. <laughs> was my battle with hives. <laughs> but so, for anyone out, out there that has had hives in the past, that has hives in the present, or that has it in the future, I stand with you. Because so. that, that wasn't rehearsed in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> so, but thank you very much. A lot of kind messages, which really, really liked and Pretty appreciated. Awesome, yeah. So we'll take it. We'll take it. Um, to start off today, we do have a couple of real topics. Zane Robertson doping scandal is written on the show notes by our producer. And then also some other interesting stuff that's been going on here in Boulder that we've been getting up to training wise. So we'll get into that. But first, to get things kicked off, I do have a little word associate, association game, which put together for ollie and george we'll go back and forth so it's basic word association just first word i'll say a word and then first word that comes to mind or maybe a short sentence just let me know what you're feeling you guys ready to go yeah i'm a little nervous yeah (laughs) same we'll we'll start off easy and we'll get into it it's actually not that bad like (laughs) could could have made it much worse all right we'll start with ollie i'll go ollie george all right jing first one jingy um tattoos really nice hey george sheep <laughs> uh pff, woolly sock somewhere right <laughs> scots men slash scots woman eyelash mcguckins <laughs> uh the ten thousand meters <laughs> eyelash mcguckins <laughs> <laughs> that's your association with the ten thousand meters nah, bro sense. that's awesome uh oakley sunglasses Josh Kerr. Yeah, easy. Uh, Bauman Track Club. How do I put this nicely? <laughs> I got uh, one. I already got one already. Go on, do your one. Oh, I'm nervous. Taylor Swift concert. <laughs> oh, there we go. Good save. Good save. Mine was, was burritos. Burritos. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mike Smith. Um, chop wood, carry water. Well done. Yeah. Nicely done. Uh, Tom Wang. Coffee club hero. <laughs> Mountain Dew. 
The elixir of life. Double threshold. <laughs> Pointless. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I never saw that come out of his mouth. Uh, Gus. My son. Mouth taping? Essential. Had to, to life. Had to bring that back. Man. Yeah, yeah. Dude, we haven't talked about it in so long. long. I'm still doing that every night, just if anyone was wondering. Yeah, I gotta get back into that. Yeah, so do I. Um, I was. No, there's too much information. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was I was uh, going to sleep a couple of nights ago with Cinta, and she said, "Can you breathe through, through your nose, please?" Because <laughs> I was breathing through my mouth. I've done that before like, as well. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, I've done that before where you just breathe through your your, um, your mouth is really loud, and you just go. <gasps> <gasps> I was like, All right, I'll, let me get the tape back out. Did you breathe into her face, or did you just? <laughs> I, was just I, I was just breathing too loud. Uh, final couple. Uh, Union Track Club. A United Airlines. Nice. <laughs> Steeplechase. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good, a good say. And I think that's it. Little, little word association. I think you guys both crushed that. Easy. That was fun, actually. A little throwback. Yeah. Did you like that I brought up the Scots men slash Scots women? Yeah, I um I did like that quite a bit. <laughs> just a just a a little visit to last week's episode for anyone who didn't listen. You we could do back. a little cycle, like. Next time we do it, I do it for you two. That's a good idea. Swap it around. Keep it going. What should we call it though, like headline wise? Well, you're the names guy. You are the names guy. Um, to be fair, you can just call it word association yeah, for now say, until, word, word until, association. We find, until we find something <laughs> funnier. Let's just say. Coffee club words that sound like words. Yeah. It's pretty stupid, but. Not your best. No, it's not my best. We'll, I mean, I, we'll I, we'll workshop. We'll come back you can't it. force it. I think yeah. if we've learned anything from over the years is that you can't force it. It just comes to you. It's a, it's just a natural. It just happens. But a, yeah, no. yeah. So there were some. I guess, the, I guess college kids are racing already, which is crazy to see. But in terms of our universe, not too much happening athletically. Probably the, the most impressive athletic feat that comes to my mind was what I saw from Yara Nagusa's bender in <laughs> Vegas when he went to a, attend the Taylor Swift concert, which we've talked about a little bit. I'm calling it the Nagus tour because it literally was him just going to Vegas and just taking over. I think he was there for two and three days and he just parted it up, saw T-Swift, also randomly, I don't know how, many, how much attention everyone was paying, but there's like a billion people that we know went, yeah. went to Vegas to go see Taylor Swift and none of us care about Taylor Swift. Apologies to anyone that does. Apologies, don't like her. So yeah. I just can't understand. I get she must have one of the biggest like pure cult followings. She is like honestly like she's like, massive. It's yeah. like Kanye. She's like Kanye West level. Like two thousand eight Kanye West. Yeah. She could she could run for president probably. Well, I didn't. Apparently, what uh, she said she urged people to vote, and apparently, like they they apparently somehow were able to measure like millions and millions of young people were voting because Taylor Swift told them to vote. Maybe they were voting And there was, that, there was that Spotify <laughs> yeah. thing. Do you remember that Spotify thing that happened that she like had to go at Spotify and took her music off Spotify yeah. and it was a massive riot? Like, stuff like that. Like, she's definitely got a lot of power. She probably has more power than Joe Biden, I'd say, in the country. True. I would say. Not to get political. But. Not to get, no, I'm not getting political. I'm just saying like, if people, if there was like, going to be an ap- apocalypse and someone was looking for a leader, I'm guessing Nagus would go straight to Swift and say, what do we do? Yeah. So It also helps she like, didn't perform for a long time so uh, then she like uh, is coming back who, who would you fly okay this is a question I have for the boys who would you fly to Vegas and do the Nagus to a bender for what artist I would choose to see Diplo or Major Lazer mm. like, like really big amazing like electronic artists seeing them in Vegas which I'm pretty sure half of them are like have residency in Vegas so they perform there every weekend so I could, <laughs> so I could probably do it any weekend but if I was It'd be that type of level. Mm. Like that's maybe not a fest. I guess a festival you always fly to. So like that's kind of a similar vibe, but it'd have to be, I think I would love to see Major Lazer live. I don't think I have anyone, but I would go, if I could afford the F1 tickets, I would go to Vegas yeah. for that. That'd be so I honestly fun. don't think I have an artist that I would be prepared to do that for. It is a lot of money. I mean, at the moment, I think for me personally, I would love to have like, same kind of vibe of view of Diplo and Major Lazer, but like Fred again and Chainsmokers. Like and definitely Chainsmokers, very, yeah. very techno poppy music mm-hmm. that you can just Seems kind like of... like the Vegas vibe. Yeah, too. you can kind it of get into the Vegas vibe. Because when I think of Taylor Swift, 
it sounds like I'm old, but I think of Love Story. I think of that old country twang, you know? I don't think of her yelling shake it off multiple times and then doing some sort of floss movement. Um, I think <laughs> what of, is the floss movement? I don't know, it's just some sort of shaking movement to obviously betray shake it off. Um, oh, okay. But I can't remember the music video. Anyway. Selling out football stadiums, like it's pretty multiple impressive. nights in a row yeah. in one city is... Well, it's, it's like her it's amazing well, it's her and um, Ed Sheeran and stuff right like those are the artists that just the like sell out tour stadiums Harry yeah. Harry Styles yeah even though his new album sucks but Ooh. nah controversial I mean, that is not okay you gotta agree Fine Line was way better than was. Harry's House Much better. that might be controversial for our listeners I'm just putting it out here Fine Line album should have been the Grammy winning album not Harry's House I think Harry's House was not that good yeah but that's a good question. Just wait till get uh, rocks thrown into our windows. After this. <laughs> the Harry Styles fans. Yeah, and the Taylor Swift ones as well. Shout out to Avery Casillas, big Harry Styles fan. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure Avery, this is like for exposing Avery, our water boy. I'm pretty sure he only is, I think 80% he's a massive, massive Harry Styles fan because he knows that every single female is a massive Harry Styles fan. So that's fan. his in. That's his in to like talk I to girls. I just exposed or, him. I just exposed yeah. him. Because I know... So he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't really like Harry Styles. Yeah. <laughs> he's just, He'll go to a Harry Styles concert if like... There's, he's bringing, there's a, bringing, a, bringing, a, bringing a girl. Bringing a girl. Exposed. Exposed. Also tip for any young, young bucks out there. Get into Harry Styles because then the girls, you'll have something to talk to them about. But music, cool. Tick that box. Moving on from that. Zane Robertson doping scandal. <laughs> <laughs> what a transition. Straight into <laughs> great, great transition. transition. Uh, great transition. So we could have talked... This is all, already a week old. Mm. Could have talked about it last week. It's still going though. Still, still on social media still. Still, yeah, it's massive because... I mean, it's just... I think it, they've always been very well known for their story. Zane and his brother, Jake. Is it Jake? Yeah. Jake. Robertson moving to Kenya when they were 16 or 17 out of New Zealand where apparently you know they got bullied a lot like they didn't I, I'm not sure all the details but like they moved to chase their dream of running they've been there for that must have been so long ago that must have been over 10 years ago 15, now. 16 years it's been ages potentially I'm not sure and then he just tested positive for EPO which what came from a test at the 2022 Manchester is, it, was, is that the Great North run the half marathon so. so a while ago now and I think any, I mean that's like I mean, he's a New Zealand athlete, so he's, you know, like a lot closer to us than some other athletes that have tested positive. But just with the context of the story and everything, and also he's just, I think he, I always get him and his brother confused. I'm pretty sure he's just been banging out like mad half marathon results are all around like 60 minutes. Like, I think that's been him, not his brother. I honestly think it was Jake that recently ran like 60 flat. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm getting them confused. But they've, they've both just run like they're both there. Very maybe impressive. they've both broken sixty. Very, I, I think they might have. I think at least Zane. I don't know. One of them has. Yeah. But anyway, it's just like massive story, especially because like Kenya at the moment has a pretty bad reputation for doping. I think at the moment Kenya is like number three on the list of like countries with the most people serving a ban. So it's just like there's a lot of layers. Who's to number story. one? I think Russia. Russia. <laughs> I think it's like Russia, India, Kenya. India is number two. Yeah, they're like... Yeah. They had a lot of positive tests last year. Did they? I don't know. How much does it take for a country to be... Like, you know like how what numbers was, are we talking? Yeah. Because Russia was banned, right? From competing. I don't know if Russia was banned because of... It was uh, the, the pure numbers or it's the way they were doing yeah. it. I think that was because they confirmed it was a state-sponsored thing and not an individual thing. Uh, that was why Kenya didn't get mm-hmm. banned last not too long ago. Yeah, but that's why these the these countries, I think there's maybe about six or seven countries that have above a certain number. So now they're on like more like high alert and their athletes have to test positive multiple times, uh, test negative, sorry, <laughs> multiple times before they're allowed to compete at the world champs. Kenya is one of those countries. So that's why like, unfortunately, sometimes some of their athletes can't compete at world champs because they haven't been tested enough. But anyway, a lot of layers to this story. And then... Zane personally, he went on uh, another podcast. I think it's called Runners Only. I don't know if you'd ever heard of that. I hadn't, but I know who that guy is. He's yeah. on a bunch of radio stations at home. Yeah, like it was very legit. And it's crazy to see someone test positive and then almost the same day, an interview mm-hmm. come out about them testing positive. And I got to say, the I mean, you're going to get so much shit for testing positive for EPO regardless. And then he did this interview. And I think in my mind, from what I've seen, it actually made things worse mm. because... 
I think there's a lot of empathy for him in terms of, well, dude, you've just like ruined your life type. Like the people understand, I mean, like it's just running. So it's like mental health. He's clearly gone through a lot of stuff and has been going through a lot of stuff for a long time. So people em- empathize with that side of it. But then there's also just the side of it where, man, like you're ruining the sport that we're all working so hard to try and make as great as possible. Like every time someone takes a drug, it just totally ruins it. And then I think, I don't know how you guys felt about this, but he claimed on the, he said on the podcast that he only took EPO one time and then he tested positive. And then it's just like, dude, no one's going to believe you. <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's a very hard fetch story, particularly when he lied beforehand saying that he was injected what he thought was a COVID vaccine from a Yeah, I didn't even mention that, that layer of it. So that's why he's been eight years yeah. rather than four because he, came he up, lied. He lied about the story and he said that he thought he was getting COVID and they injected him with EPO, I think, in a Kenyan like hospital and, and, like, you, and you have dude. to give some empathy towards he admitted Ken- that he made that up yeah and you've got, to, you've got to give some empathy to kenya because like they are dealing with a lot of situations with doping but like to have somebody a new zealand runner to make that claim against a kenyan doctor that didn't exist mm-hmm. see, that gave an epo without a COVID vaccine it was a bit of a that's a bit of a tough thing to say and then lie about and then <laughs> yeah come back and say oh that was a lie like i imagine a lot of Ken- kenyan athletes who are clean and are trying their best to, you know, uphold the reputation of clean sport. Hearing that, it's it, I can imagine it's extremely upsetting for them. Yeah, it just tarn- just tarnishes their reputation a little more, and it's it's such a bad story as well. <laughs> like it's, it's such tough. a bad story. Well, it's tough, but maybe I'm, it's bad enough that it was just so obviously bullshit that yeah. I think it doesn't. And maybe it hopefully doesn't affect. Because that was, makes me very uh, concerned. I mean, man, the the Robertson you know? twins. I knew about them when I was little as a runner and I think a lot of Americans too because of their story they were quite big, a big deal it's an amazing like it's, it's, like their story it's pretty was, ridiculous yeah. to think about moving to Kenya with At your brother 17, 16 mm-hmm. years of age and I think they had no money no. I think they just yeah. grinded it out I, I heard he was talking about like when they first got there they all got like malaria like they went through like so much stuff to like chase their dream of being a runner and then you think about taking EPO and it just fuck man it just like ruins it all like it ruins like your it ruins the story for sure yeah like there's a there was a lot of magic to that story and it, i think i think is, is, is zane the commonwealth games bronze medalist yeah mm-hmm. in the 10k yeah. Glasgow, against maybe? yeah was it that sounds i think it is pretty hard to medal in that event mm-hmm. as well like yeah i think 5k 5k i think willis was in it yeah. but it's With, just and his brother but for i mean yeah me too i've been like following them for a long time when they because they didn't finish they didn't even finish high school i think no, they, went, they didn't they went one year early but when they were like in sixth form hugo my old brother was in his senior year and i remember watching them race like new zealand secondary schools and they were like third and fourth behind my brother and this other guy and it was like fucking crazy twins that are mm-hmm. and then they went yeah. to went to Kenya and it was like you know even in New Zealand that was like I mean obviously in New Zealand it was like this is this is pretty wild but obviously it was like you know you had to have a lot of respect for them at the time because they were doing something like no one else had ever tried but then at this point and like you said with the mental health stuff I'm hopeful like it is just running and hopefully he can get that part sorted out but as a New Zealand distance runner like and I'm sure every other New Zealand distance runner is is pretty pissed like that that just doesn't represent New Zealand running at all and like it's just such a shitty image um for us and and I don't think there are probably many of our kind of generation distance runners probably associate with them very much like we don't know them they never were in New Zealand like they I've never been on a team with them so I actually like I don't even know them at all but um like I feel like New Zealand is is fortunate to have like such a good reputation generally for for the like upholding like the values of sport yeah integrity and sport and stuff so and then maybe that's like maybe they should have been how, how does the um what what is a an athletics federation what was their responsibility for athletes overseas like for you guys 
That's a great question. That's a good question. Um, I think it's the, I think it's the same. It'd be the same as New Zealand. I'm honestly the one thing I noticed. I don't want to say anything that's gonna upset athletes or anything like that. But like, if you're overseas and you're getting supported overseas, I don't think the resources that AA would have are as transferable because there's different healthcare system here. There's different treatment here. Um, you might be able to have some sort of funding or some money you can use for anything. Um, that I'm sure a, a, a and what about a and Z have what about um, like drug testing though drug testing well, are they like, paying for that or is, yeah they're still they, paying they, for they pay for, sports integrity Australia pay for that well so, my testing though like my testing when I was home I got tested a lot by SIA whereas like when I'm over here I'm usually tested by World Athletics they're the ones that pay for it you, we still get tested by like Australia but I think it's just more expensive yeah so they don't do it too obviously it's, it's a lot of resources to do and if you're in the World Athletics Register Pool, which I am, I get tested by World Athletics and I get tested by SAIA. But SAIA tested me a lot when I was home because it was a good opportunity to do it. It's less expensive to send someone over. They know I'm going back. There was like multiple races that they could test me at. Um, so that's kind of, but they do send, I mean, Morgan and I have b- both been tested by SAIA um, in Boulder and they just send like, they just hire. Um, Would like, they just pay like you started to come test yeah. us? But I was thinking about that because I doubt they were tested very much in Kenya just because firstly, I doubt Athletics New Zealand has like the biggest budget for, mm. or whoever the doping agency in New Zealand is. I don't is. know what it's called, but that's I, what I was thinking. I doubt like, they have that much of a budget. And then Kenya has got to be pretty hard to navigate to test, get people there to test your athletes. But that seems like, I mean, shit, they probably can't tell you where to live. Like it's obviously you can live wherever you want, but if you've got athletes living in Kenya and Ethiopia, cause I think one of them was like, the two countries widely known to be the easiest places to like to get that stuff like no that's a real thing like people like, you want to be on the like that's seems like that's kind of their responsibility to yeah i don't know if that's like to a, be testing there. i think that's a problem that they're aware of that maybe they don't have a fix yet because i know like mo farah for example got a lot of shit for training in ethiopia at a time when it's just known that it's like harder to test you if you're like in certain places so that's a that's a real issue that does exist is like athletes going a certain like i don't know it's not like it's not like everyone that goes to these places is necessarily suspicious but no, the reality is it's just more difficult to test you in certain places it's even like they used to dane and jake used to there were articles five six years ago they would come out and like say how like they were just seeing how prevalent it was like in their community people they knew like they were just like watching it being done in front of them yeah well, I think that's also where Zane lost some potential goodwill to gain is that I think I'll, because, you know, maybe it'll still come because, as we said, this is so fresh. But I think when someone does like have the type of moment where they become they're honest with it and like so he admitted that he doped he admitted that he made it up. You want them to be 100 percent honest. Like if you can if you feel like they're only being like 50 percent honest then it's like. It's not the same because at least like like Lance Armstrong, like arguably the worst doper of all time, at least he went on Oprah at the end of like, like clearly a terrible person, but at least he went on Oprah and he like actually admitted to everything and he kind of explained everything. There's two differences with that though. Lance Armstrong made millions and millions of dollars. The Live Strong Foundation, like he had nothing, he, he like was getting sued by a lot of people and all that sort of stuff. But like, what's that got to do with it? Well, if you look financially between Zane and Lance Armstrong, who is going to be more likely to be able to look after themselves after this happening? Like Zane probably doesn't have much of a financial um, situation that Lance did. Like Lance went on Oprah; they probably paid him to do that. But how does how does him not telling the full truth change his financial situation? Well, I feel like he can. He feels like he can tell the full truth because at the end of the day, he knows he's going to be fine. Whereas Zane probably is going to be bullshitting half of it because he wants to be able to figure out a way in which he can navigate and be seen as more i don't know likable and, and i don't think that's helping though i think that's what we're saying I but, feel he, like by but he might half, think that i mean it's I not know. like he can go like he can't be a coach or an athlete for eight years yeah he I, may as well like he's broken he has he holds six new zealand records and he's saying that he was clean for all of them that's yeah, that's what i'm saying he's trying to hold some sort of integrity yeah. Whereas, like with Lance, like Lance was already done. Like he was pretty much. Yeah, I see. It, I see what you're saying now, but I yeah. think he still lost it. 
No, I, 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 I agree. I just feel like it's hard to compare it to... Him anyway. Yeah. Like, what about, like, I guess it's pretty contrast to this, the Shelby situation because Shelby, to this day, still denies um, the, like, deliberately taking uh, Nandrolone. But it's just, it's very difficult to, like, I don't know, compare it to other sports because our sport, for, for some reason, well, not some reason, but doping is, like, so prevalent. Well, it's, it's not that hard to compare it to cycling. If you were going to compare it to one sport, it's probably... I think cycling but do you think, worse. Do you think... Yeah, so, yeah, and that's the thing with cycling. It was worse. To financially, like, if you, if you have this person that thinks that, okay, I'm going to start doping, try and make all this money in track, and then if I get caught, I get caught. Whereas, like, in cycling, it's the same kind of avenue. Cycling, you're probably going to be more... Benef- you had more benefit financially than, than yes. running, right? If he, so that's probably why if he admitted to be for cheating through all his six New Zealand records, would he have to pay back money for those? I still don't think so. I think, well, I, I don't actually know how an admission... Because he probably couldn't afford to. What about yeah. his medal? He's Common Games bronze medal. Like, I don't know to give that back. If, uh, if you admit to doping, if they can actually retro... I think unless you're sample test positive... Oh, I, during the meet. Yeah. Like, yeah, I don't know if you're just saying you test... I mean, actually, maybe you open yourself up to lawsuits, hmm. potentially. I'm, I'm not really sure how that works, but because uh, it was did he in new zealand did he ever do any marketing ever any speaking like did he work for any companies because like, i'm curious to see if like that stuff you could get lawsuited i think it's more just he probably had a contract yeah that he got paid to break records and but and now it's like, one yeah. thing that's really sad for him which you could tell by listening to the to the <coughs> podcast interview that he did when we said like it's just running for him, like it wasn't just running as the sad. Like we we all have a kind of the privilege or whatever you want to call it of like we have running and then if we couldn't run, like we have like other stuff to go and do in life and hopefully ways to make money when we're done running. But the way <coughs> he just <coughs> yeah <laughs> the way the way he talked about it because he did make the decision so young to go all in on running, like he he was saying the pr- some of the pressures that pushed him to doping were. He literally had nothing else. Like he he had f- like a pure financial. He's like, I gotta make money, so I gotta like get better at running. So, like when you think about it like that, man, that gets the desperate. Re- that it doesn't gets make it any sad. better though. It doesn't make it I think any it better. It almost makes it worse. Like yeah, how like that's gonna happen at some point, regardless if he dopes or not. He's gonna reach a point where he can no longer make money running. Yeah, you're gonna have to figure everybody, it out. Everybody it's, reaches that point. Everyone's gonna reach a point, but it's also like that's also why the doping is also so prevalent in these countries is that winning one of those marathons as a Kenyan Ethiopian will set you up yeah for life basically by a farm by resources well this is the thing with them moving they moved when they were 16, 17 they were so young they had no mentor they had no like kind of figure to kind of hopefully give them you know like they've got no one really I don't maybe they do have someone but it just seems like they, they went there they've trained really hard 15, 16 years like Zane having that thought of desperation of needing money there's no one there to tell him hey like you you like it's always going to it's going to come to a point at some point you have to look at this part of life or have to look at outside of running there's no one there to tell him that well, which is really sad yeah i don't like, know if you look at it that way i don't know what their community looks like in kenya i assume when you're there for that long you have you have friends i'm sure you do and you have family but i mean they were both coach. married one of them's like jake's got a kid but like, did, but life, that's yeah. that's what I'm curious to know. Is was there someone there, a moral, co- like conscience, of saying of someone step, stepping up and saying like, hey, you, you, there's got to be other things. There's going to be other things in life. Probably yeah. the other way around. There's probably people. Yeah, well, that's, that's what I'm saying. Stuff well, so he 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 kind of blamed his wife, who I think is his ex-wife. He said that she brought the EPO home and like. So, so and she like, was telling him to take it. For yeah, years that's what he said. So. Who knows what the truth is, but yeah, but that's, that's what I'm saying. Like it's just it's it's tough because you just you we'll never know, we'll never know. Yeah, the true story behind it. But so that I was can, like yeah. Sorry, go <coughs> I was gonna say I feel like that's another issue with so many having so many events in in the track world. So get rid of the ten k. Get rid of the ten k. I was I waiting for this to come. No, I don't mean mm-hmm. it. I mean I mean like not diff, not discipline. I mean actual events that there's. Because you know they always talk about like people need to have so many tests before like worlds or majors or whatever mm-hmm. Olympics if you're from certain countries like the fact that there are so many events means it's so much harder to like make sure people are tested before 
less like more random events because i yeah. feel like there should be some standard like if there's a meet and you can make more than like some amount of money like everyone in that field should be have been tested in like the some amount of period that is, i don't know science says that you need to be tested beforehand that's but, a valid point because there's people like showing up to race like with on the line where there's like fifty thousand dollars a hundred thousand dollars on the line and like you don't need to have been tested beforehand i mean that, that that's but if, well yeah. what athletics does i believe that if it's say a gold label i think they have to have some level mm-hmm. of drug testing after it but yeah before i don't think i don't think anything exists before like to qualify to be able to compete in that event but i think just for the olympics right and yeah well it's me yeah i think I that's mean, it not to obviously new zealand has a great reputation but new zealand barely tests their athletes anyway you haven't been tested much um you probably get tested more now you and sam but I, I imagine compared to like if i look at testing for countries the u.s tests a lot they put a lot of mo- i they, think usada has a lot of money a lot of money they te- well apparently the organization usada is bigger than water really financially and like just the way it's governed <clears throat> it's bigger than and then water and usada butt heads about how testing should go about this is what i'm hearing from the our american athletes but like australia and new zealand obviously smaller countries smaller financial base like it's hard to to get that money to test but i'm, I'm sure like if if the structure of what athletics and diamond leagues or continental gold tools if they just had the structure of like if you're competing in this um league or whatever you want to call it you have to be getting tested before like you have to be getting tested at some point uh to be able to compete in it yeah i, I believe that it just like, it just comes down to money yeah honestly which just is like the a tough lot of thing because money shouldn't the more money you'd have in the sport then maybe the better more cleaner that everything would be because more testing would happen financial financial incentive yeah it's just tough one it's it's, just tough it is you know if we had if we had the the super league (laughs) the chicken boy coffee club super league whatever you you could and things were more controlled you could we need to make meet an oligarch or someone with a lot of money and just like pitch this like yeah like that would be that could be part of it but in the current way that the sport exists it's just like the wild west and it's yeah, I mean, just if so you just water stands for Wild West. <laughs> wild West. The Wild West water. This is was like, there's just not the incentive to. Well, there is obviously there is a lot of incentive, but it's hard to find the money everywhere. I think every single different aspect of the sport is is saying we need more money, we need more money, and then it gets divided, and the anti-doping is probably gets left behind, often, and that's pretty sad. But it's just. I mean that's probably true of all sports. I guess it's it's hard to find like what the solution is because in the interview, he was still saying that like the doctors are ahead of like the anti doping still. He said like it's he said EPO is actually really hard to detect for still, and he seems like he knows quite a bit about EPO. So <laughs> so Wait, like it's hard to get caught or yeah. Tight? He said it's really hard to detect. Just well, he said something with the half life or something like if yeah, you just take it early yeah he said it's hard to say i think it's because he was saying how it's because your body does naturally produce it it is hard for them to distinguish between synthetic like drug taking epo and natural epo so i don't know i don't think we're going to fix the anti doping problems it's it's we're weird we're not going to fix it in the next half hour <laughs> we're not going to fix it today unfortunately it's it's crazy that uh i've been waiting for it, so at, one of you guys to mention a solution so we can <laughs> fix it but dude it's crazy that in other sports how different it is because in other sports they function well with kind of just like not caring about it as much which is really sad because i mean other sports are different they're not as like i think a sport like like what we do is more cut and dry between like i mean all sports drugs are going to make you better but our sport in particular drugs are very effective what, if you want to take it's them? just like it's the individual aspect to it right because like if you look at any sport that's a team sport it's a team that wins in the end of the day but if you're one person and you're drugged up and you beat everyone you win you get all the prize you get all the glory it's one person i think yeah. it's also because it's not a skill based yeah sport. yeah that too but it's funny i was seeing all these comments on twitter about how because a lot of people call for like life bans for anyone that's like associated with epl or anything which makes sense and then in other sports where they have like players unions they even like protect themselves from drugs, you know? Like if a sport has a player's union, like I think they make it so that their punishments for taking drugs aren't as bad. Which is crazy to think about. Aren't as bad? Yeah. They're, like they protect each other. What kind of sports? Like baseball. 
Really? I'm guessing. I don't. I don't. I think. Dude, like what about the, the freaking NFL, NFL with like yeah. NFL like domestic abuse and all that sort of stuff? It's like six weeks off. Is it? It's like shit like that. I don't know if that's true. I'm pretty sure I've seen stuff where like there's been allegations of like abuse or assault, and then the the players only get like three or four matches off. Yeah. Or even like taking some sort of drug. Or I know. Steroid. I know. In like the NFL, they can get caught for taking drugs, and it's like not that bad. Yeah. Like they can come back pretty quick from it, but that was kind of a random side. I think overall, it's just another. Would you reckon? That, okay, f- f- just to go back to your point, lifetime bans. Is it? There's no lifetime bans at, the, at this current point. Like, if you test positive, I don't it's know. Only maybe, the max is eight I, years. No, I'm pretty sure if you did it enough times, you get a lifetime ban. <laughs> well, like I'm sure I, there's something that there was, a, there was an American sprinter that got caught a couple of times, and he still was able to compete a lot. Who? Creed, Gatlin. Gatlin. Yeah. I think he. I think he was banned for quite a bit, but also I think he got off on some of his. He supposed to be twice, but one time he got out of it or something. Yeah. Blames I don't know masseuse. how it blames his masseuse. Yeah, easy, <laughs> <laughs> easy way to do it. I I think but I like think like, like first him, time like, is four years. I think second time is probably eight to ten. I mean, years. for Zane, he like a, four years or eight years. It was that's a lifetime ban. Yeah, and he's yeah he's done. I I'm, I'm not certain on this, but I assume if you got caught for EPO three times, you get banned, you'd get banned for life. You'd expect that, yeah. I can't, but yeah, people call for like straight away lifetime bans which i mean it makes sense i guess then you would be ta- you would be thinking about the people that like a peter ball situation yeah where the false positive then well, they get screwed the typical result for be sample yeah yeah inconclusive like that situation is i mean he i think he went on a current affair australian listeners will know what current affair is but that's like a 60 minute kind of talk show where they talk about it and it's just yeah that with the Zane Robinson thing now it's it's just yeah it's, it seems to be coming up a lot now <laughs> people getting caught yeah I mean it's been yeah. I, I don't know if that what it is but I think that I think always people are testing positive in our sport and that's one of the really sad things but yeah overall I think our takeaways are like nothing revolutionary it's just like I think it's just like sucks and then so I what, think it's just the wild west it's the wild west yeah. out there and I think <laughs> His statement, unfortunately, his podcast interview, unfortunately, afterwards, like, didn't make things better. It kind of made things, like, look very bleak for him. So, yeah. I do empathize for him, but it's like, man, you took EPO. Like, I think the way to look at it, and maybe this will lead nicely into our next segment, is uh, the word from Olev is the best way to look at it is that if you're doing, if you're doing everything you can and you're kind of at this level, then you hope that you can just beat everyone taking drugs yeah. that, are, that are trying to microdose and do it right and then the other ones are going to get caught so that's a good way of looking at it but because I mean at the end of the day it's like for us the reason why I find it hard to I find it really hard to empathize with a drug cheat because I think we're probably all pretty similar in this is like like if you think about like your why like why you actually do the sport and why you why you are so committed to it and like what you're chasing if you took drugs, it just none of it would make sense. Like if we're, for example, for myself, just simplistically, it's like I want to see how great I can be. Well, no shit, I could be better if I took drugs or if I cheated. But it's like, then what would the point be? So I find it so hard to empathize. And then, but we are aware that it's out there. So you can't, but you can't spend all day being depressed and uh, jaded about it. So Very easy just, to do that. Just some of the day. <laughs> just it's some just really easy to do that. And that's the one thing that like, yeah. We're in a sport that we, like, all three of us are super competitive athletes and we want to be the best version of ourselves. And it's tough when you're trying to be the best version of yourselves and then all of a sudden you just see these people testing positive and cheating and particularly people that you could potentially look up to as well. Mm-hmm. Like, that's extremely tough pill to swallow mm-hmm. when you believe and have the impact of somebody just being able to crush and be able to do their thing be the best version of themselves and then you find out that they're a cheater it's just very hard to like Morgan said empathize with it yeah but as George mentioned Good Olav our uh, I guess he's our advisor now <laughs> technically <laughs> Santara Tech uh, what's, do you know his last name I'm not sure what his name is <laughs> so Olav the Norwegian Olav the Norwegian the other Norwegian he is the coach of a couple of recent on pickups in the triathlon world I'm just, sure just, just small pickups. You, small you might have heard of them. Yeah, little ones. Mr. Christian Blumenfeld and Gustav Eden. 
the current reigning Olympic and Ironman champions, respectively. So and he's their coach. So he's a big deal. And he has a company called Santerra Tech that's not sponsored content, just to give context. And the way no that, context. The way, that, <laughs> <laughs> the way that he operates is uh, it's, it's different. But it's like stereotypical, like, oh, this guy's from Norway. Because he does all the lactic testing, mm. all the stuff that you hear about Yelka Bingabris, and he does that plus a ton more. Mm. And so he, because he has this association with On Now, so these his athletes have On sponsorships, but then his company is also contracted to On to, I don't really know how to explain it, but essentially like to help the other, like On help their athletes. So help us in a way. So he's, been talking with Dathan for a few months now, and God, fine. I'd love to be on those conversations. <laughs> I would love to be on those conversations. It would be crazy. Man. But oh. he finally came out to visit this past week and start kind of explaining to us how he operates and how what he has become an expert on throughout his life, how that can be applied to our training and help us get a little bit better. And he's got a lot of nuggets. He's one of those people who you can go listen to him. He's done. He's done some. He's so many YouTube videos on him. Uh, you could look him up or you can even go listen to say the Rich Roll podcast. He's on there like big time. He's 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 big time and he's so confident when he speaks. He's like expert. He's an engineer, just like nerds out on everything. Everything has to be like perfect and he has an answer to every single question. So listening to him talk is very, very interesting because in many ways it is different from how we've all operated uh, up to this point, but <laughs> we've, <laughs> we've seen the rise in our sport of lactic testing yeah yeah doing all that type of stuff and he's just he's kind of the guy who's like he's the way he explained to us is like he's like the one who does it like by far the best because he was even so he advised uh i don't know how much of this is like public but like he's like an advisor to the all the norwegian team stuff so like jakob for example mm. but he even said like jakob's like not doing it correctly he pretty <laughs> much said no one's doing it correctly but him that's kind of what he said yeah um which is mentor in life that was the funniest thing was when i asked him i asked him this question he was going through kind of all the information because we did some stuff in a long run and he i asked him a question about double threshold and he knew exactly who i was talking about and he looked me dead in the eye well you did said, always, you did also say when you asked the question the someone that i race against did i say that yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay it kind of slipped out but he kind of went through it all and he's like pretty much saying that he knows how to do it and they're not doing it correctly i don't know how true that is well he said he said that i they think, don't know what to do with the data yeah I think. that yeah. was the main thing is they don't know what to do with the data um but side note just to because I want you guys' opinion. Um, Olaf's kit, when he turned to the track, would you guys, yeah or nay, the way he looked, just to oh, the visualize fit. the I, fit. I wasn't there, so I can't you speak to, vi- to visualize it, to Morgan, he was wearing on shoes. He was wearing these woolen socks that were up to his knees. Shorts. Sweet shorts. Sweet shorts. Massive beanie, like it was like a cone on his head. Um, he was wearing a uh, Sherpa full, jacket. Full length pocket. Parker jacket. And then an orange, like uh, the, the puffy vest thing. He looked so Norwegian. Yeah, it was like crazy. Was that sounds like the most stereotypical Scandinavian. And he just, and he like just kind of woolen socks and sandals. Yeah, he like, just yeah. wore shorts and yeah. it was like 25 degrees. He's like freezing. He just, he just, so he just struts in. And then like you just see a Dathan looking at you guys. Well, you can tell he's Norwegian. Yeah, that's that's amazing. <laughs> it was so good. Electric. He's like, you're wearing shorts. Why are you wearing shorts? Like Rich is like yelling at him. And he's like looking around going, what? Yeah. <laughs> But I right. just can't believe you didn't finish the story. The story about uh, collecting all of your oh stuff God. and Christian's um, feces, <laughs> yeah. feces samples yeah. for the like the year. No, well, I mean, he, how long was he, no, this he's, he, Apparently, he's starting to do that now. He hasn't done that before. Yeah, he's, like, he's, he's doing an extreme camp. He sounded like, like he's doing it for months, which yeah. I don't. He's, get. Like, he's, um, that's just, a, yeah. just a backwards story. That he's a, he's an engineer. But he's also like this guy that's obsessed with like he just data experiments everything like he loves data because we were talking about we were at the gym and Olaf was sitting down on his computer just whizzing away and uh, we talked about coffee club with Adam who's also a part uh, I think he's a part of the company with uh, Olaf and coffee came into the conversation and you just see Olaf's head pop up and he comes over and he shows me like he measures like all the the density the type of bean. Like every the type of espresso shot, the amount of caffeine in it, he has all this data on just coffee. Like he's crazy. He's just crazy. Like yeah. Morgan, I brought Morgan and George around to like check it out, and we were, but all three of us were just looking at it, and I thought he thought that we were like 
experts on coffee, you know, because of coffee. Club. I had no idea about anything he was saying. Yeah, me neither. And he's like, you guys got coffee club. And then he just showed us all this data. I was following it for like 30 seconds. And then he kept going for another like 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, it was. And the rest of it was just like. It was so over the it top. It was really over the top. But it was pretty cool though. I thought it was cool. It was cool. Because he can like measure and do the exact same shot that he did like two years ago off this data that he made. Yeah. It's but crazy. So not only does he do it with coffee, he does it with his athletes as well. <laughs> <laughs> and. So the way that he, I think this would be interesting for people watching because I know a lot of people that are more, not like people coaching themselves, but obviously people want to try, people want to know what the kind of the next thing is in the sport or what like the top guys are doing. And he's the two athletes in the triathlon have kind of taken over the triathlon world. And I'm not an expert in it, but it seems like they've taken it over in like a pretty short period of time. Like they're like, they're like so good. Yeah. And He's just like, it's just like these two athletes that he coaches. I don't know how many other athletes he coaches. I know he like consults on a lot of other stuff, but like it is, he knows how to have like amazing performances with these guys. It's very successful. Mm -hmm. And they, they went from doing short course to long course, doing like the Olympic distance to the Ironman in like a year. And then he was already like the Kona, like world champion. He has the records and everything. So it it was crazy. The results. He reckons they're like five to 10 years ahead of, I don't know the rest the, of the, world. the rest of the world in yeah. terms of what he's doing with the stuff and like the level he's at yeah but which is hopefully what he that's kind of what he's trying to share with us and we're gonna to start to so should we share it with our with the listeners or should we keep it a secret for now i feel like we wouldn't we wouldn't be able to we would yeah if i don't, we I don't it, even if we tried to explain it i don't think we could do it justice <laughs> yeah and people wouldn't understand what the fuck we're talking it's about also anyway. very intense and very expensive very intense very expensive yeah. i mean like let's see Measuring is a small part of it. Let's just let's just make it clear now, though. Two of us on this podcast aren't doing that "quote unquote" testing. We weren't supposed to do the testing. They're only doing a couple of athletes. Only the elite. Only the elite. elite. Only the elite. Only the people that Dathan, Dathan wants. <laughs> Dathan McDonald, superstar. Dathan only wants these certain people to do it. Should we mention who they are? I don't think it's that big of a deal. Okay, Alicia. <laughs> Alicia, big surprise. Alicia, Joe, big surprise. Sage and. Chicken boy morgs. Chicken boy morgs. <laughs> the funny thing about me is like, dude, how am I going to do the testing? I can't even run. <laughs> like, what do you expect me to do? That was go, the go, best go, thing. Go every walk, every go, meeting. Go every, walk on the treadmill. <laughs> every meeting. Olaf is going through. It's like, yes, yeah, so we're going to have... Oh, that's Russian. Um, <laughs> I can't do it all. It's kind of close enough. It's kind of we're going to have Morgan. We're going to have Joe, Sage, and Alicia going to be doing this testing. This is good. And that then, was really good. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, Morgan's sitting there going, yeah, I can't run. <laughs> Did Bruce not tell you that? But, okay, I think we need to tell the people kind of what it actually looks like for us to make it more, because we're just speaking very generally right now, but he, he, he loves data, so he'll get data on as much as possible. That means like wearing the fanciest Garmin oh, 24 hours a day and getting all this stuff that that can tell you, wearing the heart rate monitor whenever you're training, getting your power data. So in the running world, hmm. wearing that Swiss engineer, the, the foot pods, which I, I don't understand how they work. And then, when you're doing training, taking your lactate reading, so doing the pricking your fingers or the ears and taking your blood. So it's just like a lot goes into it. And pretty much for us, the big thing with our team is that there's been so much success already. So he's not going to really change anything. But for now, it's just collecting data and getting kind of like the routines of like how to do the testing down. Because the way it works is you have the te- you get all these numbers in training, but the training the the numbers don't mean anything uh just like it's just a shot in the dark just looking at the numbers and trying to interpret them to be able to interpret them you have to go into the lab and do what they call a step test which is where it's it's a test that i think there's probably a lot of different ways to do it but it's kind of like a vo2 max test where you run on a treadmill uh, at a certain speed and then it's called a step test because i'm not sure how they, how we're going to do it but say every five minutes Maybe the speed will, they'll, they'll, you stop, take the lactic and then you go back on and then it'll step up. So your speed will go up and then the gradient of the treadmill will start going up. And if you do it correctly, you should get this nice curve for your lactic. I think your heart rate should be pretty much a straight line-ish. And, but you should have a nice, is it an exponential curve for your lactate where mm-hmm. it should stay pretty stable initially at the lower speeds and then at some point it should have a pretty big upward swing where your lactic just starts spiking and it depends on what 
your training too, right? Well, so everyone will have their own. This is the thing. Everyone will have their own individual curve. curve yeah. And that's why it, it's so specific to you. So what might still be stable on someone's curve at a lactic reading of four millimoles, that might already be on someone else's like upwards mm. part. And so the way this goes into like what is threshold training and all that. So your like your lactic threshold should be where the curve is still stable. And so that's, I mean, this is like the most simplistic, probably bad explanation of it. But the point of lactic training is you, when you, you want, you want to run at a speed or an effort that doesn't go beyond that curve, because then you're getting too much lactic in your body and you're not doing like effective threshold training. You're overdoing it essentially, if your goal is to do threshold training. So you want to do this testing, find your levels, and then you can use the information that you get from this testing to guide your training. So when you do a threshold workout, when you're doing mile repeats, once you know what your numbers should be, you can take your readings during the work and say, all right, like this pace, I'm getting this amount of lactic, so I'm doing it correctly. And then over time, you can go back and continue to do these step tests every month or six weeks. And you're, according to your training, you can change your curve. So that's where Olaf's specialty expertise comes in is he is the mastermind behind interpreting the data, looking at your curve, saying, all right, this is a 10K runner, so we want to change their curve slightly in this way. This is an 800 runner, so we want to change their curve slightly in this way. So like, you look at the training you got planned, and you're like, maybe you want to do more of this. Maybe you don't need to do as much of this, essentially. That's kind of a simplistic way of... Um, explaining it because then it gets so deep into like how you actually want to train and stuff because the thing with Olaf is he showed us a graph between which was like directly correlating volume and performance essentially so his belief is that the more volume you do the better you perform so more is more, more, is more. it's pretty <laughs> much the, the my favorite diagram the more you fuck around the more you find out exactly so that's the best way of yeah. saying it and that's so the why more you fuck around the more you f- more directly you f- proportional those yeah. two things and so that's why I mean, it, it kind of makes sense right <laughs> that's why you should be doing double threshold because well i mean we even got the get, triple threshold at one point that's why you should be doing triple threshold because yeah. you can get in more quality volume and then that's going to make you a better runner mm. <clears throat> so but he says you have to be as smart as him not to screw it up yeah <laughs> don't try it on your own you have to you have to hire him to to write your training <laughs> but it's like because there is a bit of a disconnect there because with us it's clearly not the case that more volume equals more performance because otherwise why would exhibit a why george would, beamish why would we not just all run 150 miles a week at seven minute pace you know what i mean yeah because we're at not, some point the, we're, because we like we, that sounds fucking terrible at some I, point the one doesn't yeah doesn't it it's, it's, out it's, to a it's the way i i'm not an expert but the way i've always viewed it is that everybody has the perfect like volume like the perfect point where they're gonna hit that maximum performance right before it starts dropping off before it, drops, before it goes like this <laughs> right so for example george and myself we're different runners we do different volume but i believe we also have different um like optimum like volume to performance ratio right whereas like there's going to be athletes in our team that can train less but reach that the best optimum performance that they can have than other runners even if they're doing the same event so the volume performance thing makes sense but i feel like the one thing that we've done really well with our training and with our group is that dathan's individualized everyone to have like their best kind of trajectory of optimal volume to optimal performance whereas like it seemed like with olaf like yeah, more is better if you do it the correct way with threshold. Well, but, I mean, it's it's crazy to try and compare the fact that he's currently... Well, I guess they're going back to the Olympic distance now. But that might be true if you're racing the Ironman. Because yeah, it's, how it's, many it, miles are you doing in an Ironman? It's pretty low and, intensity. And what day. intensity? Yeah, you're, you're, the fastest you're running is... I'm not sure what marathons they're running, but I don't think they're under... Are they under 230 marathons? I think Gustav split like 235 or something. Like, so compare that to the paces that we're trying to what our race paces are it's so different and that's where dathan comes in and like dathan's very big on specificity 
uh, which Vince! <laughs> <laughs> which for us Vince is, steps in, <laughs> which is us running between like fifteen hundred and five k pace. Yeah, which you can only do so much of that. Well, Sage, for example, like Sage is a pure eight hundred runner. Like all Olaf's threshold stuff would be interesting to see how that goes with Sage because she is. But she has some very very interesting takeaways yeah. for training because I. I yeah, it, I mean, not to give away people's data, but I think it's interesting when it shows, like, if if it was to show you that you don't need to do as much, you know, I, don't, I don't think it's actually ever going to impact our training that much. 1%, you said, right? 1% changes, which 1%. is very, very small, but it'd be interesting if you did take away, like, oh, yeah, I don't need to do, like, I can get on my threshold training in my long run. I don't, I can just do two speed workouts. Mm. Up, like for the rest of the week that that type of stuff would be interesting to take away but yeah it's only one percent and one percent's nothing george like that's oh, what i want because we actually <laughs> don't need to train anymore one percent is not perfect. much and and it, it is a difference it can be a difference between winning a gold medal and not one percent <laughs> but also one percent's not much if you want to have one percent of the beamish farm like if you just ask your dad and say hey ollie wants one percent of the beamish farm i'm sure it's not a, it's only one percent ollie's pitching um, for one percent it's only one percent but one percent can be be big if you're at that top top level so it, it also is very interesting because i think olaf and dathan are two obviously they expect respect each other very much and um it was pretty cool seeing them work together but they're very different coaches so Definitely. that was cool to see the contrast and comparison to to both of them yeah i think it'll be interesting now just from a data collecting standpoint it's just it is interesting just to have more data and try attempt to understand because the reality is with training and what we do, I think most of it we don't understand from, uh, there's just so much unknown out there. Like mm. science can only tell you so much, but it's still fun to have data and stuff to look at. It's just, it's just interesting. Or mm. well, how you say on the States, data. Data. Um, George, have you ever had your lactate tested? Negative. I haven't either, but somebody I at have. this coffee club, I yeah, have. you've been tested when you were 17, right? Yeah, throw back to the N Swiss labs. Young Morgan, young on, the, on the hamster wheel. I had that done when I was seventeen. And did did Olaf look at the uh, your curve? <laughs> he didn't did look. Your curve? He didn't look at my curve, unfortunately. <sighs> that was nine years ago now. I would have loved to see. I'm his a reaction different. To your I'm curve. a different human. My curve was pretty nice at the yeah, time. Yeah, I bet it was nice. It was nice. <laughs> <laughs> It's a nice curve. I had a nice curve. curve. I don't know what it looks yeah. like now. It's probably not as nice anymore. Yeah, yeah. yeah but you had a nice curve. flat line. I would love it if you just showed him a picture of it, and then all of his piece goes. Oh, that's a nice curve, yes. That's the, the, the nice thing curve. is like, I mean, when we talk about 1% changes, marginal gains, which has such a bad reputation because people just think of Team Sky and drugs. Is, that what, they, is that what they called it? Yeah, like the cycling team. Oh, the cycling team. Like I thought you think I was talking to a team in track. I was like, who the hell is Team Sky? No, no, they're big. So they're, they, they made the term marginal gains very popular. and But they were talking about so much different stuff. They're the guys talking about like the mattress you sleep on and yeah. all that. But Stewie then, has a great saying with it. But then it gets into it's like... A, sounds like Athlete 360. <laughs> yeah, that's Stuart, Stuart McSwain, he, he said that in the relay in Melbourne. Apparently, he says, it says a lot. When you're talking about racing, and he's like, find a second. Let's find a second. Like, yeah. I like that kind of term. Really? Yeah, he was saying that in the relay. He's like, all we got to do is go find a second. We just got to find a second to be better. And I was like, damn, I like that. Term. That is a good one, especially and when you, you race like the that. 1500 and your PP. He's like, well, one second is a lot. He's like, when you, <laughs> when you go into a race, like, just find a second somewhere. Just find it. Just is, go find it. That is smart. But looking at the marginal gain stuff in training and all that, it's like, it has a kind of a bad reputation. But it makes sense for, for people like you guys and say Joe. I mean, most people on the team now have put in two to three years of amazing training. Blood, I'm not sure sweat, how, and tears. How, I'm, I'm not sure what you're up to now, George, but you've been training at a high level for two years now. Yeah. Um, without major setback? Yeah, without yeah. major setback. And then, so it's like, once you get to that level and you've been putting in those weeks, it's like, yeah, let's look, let's look other other places. When I look at myself, I'm like, bro, I just need to like run. <laughs> like, I don't need to know. I don't need to know. Like, you don't need marginal gains. I don't need. You I need, need max. You just need gains. I need big gains. Yeah, I'll take the big gains. But those right would now. be easy gains. Yeah, those are the easy gains. You looked good running. 20. You looked good running on the boost today. I must say. Thank you. Seventy percent body weight yeah. does does wonders. You feel good? I feel oh, okay. Oh, I was gonna see that data. <laughs> Let's see when you see body weight. Morgan is absolutely he's ready fine. to go. He's ready to go. His efficiency amazing. We but, should be testing him now. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just. You like, should just do your step test on the boost. 
Sweet. Let's do it. I'll, I'll crush maybe, it. Maybe I'll, that's I'll what they'll so, do. I'll have, maybe I'll have the best they'll... numbers ever. Yeah, My curve will be so good. But... Just be a straight line. <laughs> <laughs> but this is where I, I would say that I am can relate it more to the average runner, perhaps our listeners, where it's like, like everyone wants there to be like some little thing they can change or some like thing they can buy to make them like better. But I think I'm in the same boat as most of the people listening where it's like, you just got to like run, like you just got to put together weeks of training and it's like, you can't really get distracted by uh, this other stuff. Like that stuff. Yes. It like me doing the testing now. Yeah. It's, it'll, it could inform me and guide me and help me still. And it's a long-term thing. It's not like a short-term thing. So it's not bad, but it's like, I'm pretty sure that I know what I have to do to get better. Whereas maybe for someone like, like Ollie, like obviously consistent training. Yes. You need to do that. But it's like, what if there was something you could slightly change because you've ticked, you tick all the boxes, maybe diet, could put that in there yeah Diane needs to um, <laughs> but I don't think Olive's testing personality <laughs> personality needs to get another tick um, care and affection uh, well I mean I still run by the, the principles that I got from Wisconsin particularly uh, McBurn he said you gotta run with three things your head your heart and your kahunas he said don't run with one of them run with all three that's smart run with your brain that's use your great brain advice. use your heart know how you feel and when it gets tough use your kahunas I like that. How do you fit that in with Mike Smith's philosophy? Um, well, to be able to chop wood and carry water, you've got to be use all, using all three as well. You've got to be able to think, think about chopping the wood. Your heart's in there when you go in to collect the water and your kahunas. Make sure you don't hit your kahunas when you're walking with all that wood and water. Back to the uh, NAU Lumberjack Training Camp, um, Mike Smith Collective Training Camp. With Mike Smith Collective, when are they going to do a, like an emblem or a logo? Do you have any idea? You should make one for them. Probably don't don't don't, don't don't do that to me. I will, I will make you, one. You could you could just start making all this team content for them and just send it to them. What if I would you reckon they'd be upset if I made a Mike Smith Collective Instagram and just <laughs> started make, making make, content? make merch for them? Yeah. And just sold it and then hundred okay. percent profits okay. go to coffee club. Okay. Do you think this would be immoral or unethical for us on April Fools to sell Mike Smith merch? <laughs> <laughs> That sell like <laughs> fucking hotcakes. Uh, how much? How many? How many units? How quickly can we can we put this together? Yeah. How fast can we move? Uh, I have a photo of him. <laughs> He's just going. We've only got four days. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's do it. We're gonna release the April Fool's merch pack. <laughs> this is just a chop wood carry water. <laughs> yeah. We could also with the April Fool's pack have a thanks go to for, sleep. Thanks for being no, a fan. Just... Go to sleep, and then we just forge his signature on. Is that bad to profit off that? I don't think so. I think he'd be happy about it. He's, he'd make some lesson about it. In. Yeah. He'd make some lesson about it, wouldn't he? Yeah, someone's gonna do it. Someone's gonna cash in on all that. So, yeah. My main takeaway from the week was that if you want to go fast, you just need to have a lot of carbs. Oh. <laughs> Dude, I don't was... know what you're talking about. He, he he made this massive graph, which the end the, point is the last thing was velocity. And the first, there was a bunch of complicated stuff in the middle, but the first step was just carbs. It's calories, just getting in calories, 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 in. Calories, yeah. calories, calories, calories in, velocity out. It's like, oh, you just made the calories in bigger, then and it's going to get the bigger. Velocity is going to get it's bigger. It's obvious. Let's eat as much food as we can and train Bro, as been, much as we can. I've been trying. Seriously. Well, that's the thing with. The, that's what's made Ollie so good. Though. What about Yard? Yard fucking eats like anything. You, you Calorie guys, man. You actually, Yard does eat a lot. You guys eat a lot, but you, your eating patterns are. Different. You're more of a binge. <laughs> What's the word? Binge and then fast. Well, Ollie, Intermittent. Ollie isn't weird. He's actually normal. To he's like a normal human being where he just eats like three big or two big meals because you don't really eat breakfast often. No. So you I, eat two I, I big struggle. meals. This is the thing that I, maybe it's the coffee, but I struggle to eat breakfast in the morning. I struggle, and then when I get to lunch, I can eat a fuck ton, and then when I get to dinner, I can eat a shit ton as well. And then it's the next day. Fuck time passes shit done. Lots of calories. <laughs> but see, that's kind of how, that's how a normal person that doesn't train a lot eats as well. Whereas I think most high level athletes are feeling like they always have to eat. Well, this is the issue because Olaf said that if you have a quick metabolism and you're eating a lot, it means that your, your body's extremely efficient, which means it's really good at its job. That tells me that my body's not good at its job because it, it's eating. I'm you're not hungry by the morning yeah. yet. <laughs> yeah, it's not eating correctly. I mean, maybe I need to play more video Olaf games. Olaf can say what he wants about your body, but clearly he is good at his job because he can run a 330 mile. I mean, 1500. 330 mile, <laughs> fuck yeah. Um, so, but yeah. So it is, it is very good at his job, but 
Yeah, that's I, that's that's why I'm carving up right now, guys, with water. Smart. It's yeah. for the canal. Yellow water. Yummy. There right. are carbs in there. <laughs> are there Good carbs, carbs in this? For sure. Has to be. For sure. For sure. Always drinking a beer for people that are listening at home to spoil it. But so that was um our past week of training updates. I will keep you guys updated as to how it uh changes our lives, which I don't think it will very much. But we'll see what happens. We're mostly it's just very bragging. Interesting. Yeah, we're working with uh, we're working with uh, one of the best one of the best coaches in the world. Oh, we were already working with one of the best coaches Rips! in the world. So <laughs> now we got two of them. Take that. Uh, uh, I was gonna name a different group that doesn't have one of the best coaches in the world, but I won't do that. Cause that's what group is that? Don't know. Let's move on. Let's move on. <laughs> Moving on. So this has been another one of those episodes where I think we've already talked for over an hour and we haven't hit any of the Q and A yet. But I think it's a great Q and A. Another great Q and A episode in the books. So I think we'll have to do some quick ones to make up for it. Q and A number one: Has George ever participated in a haka? Which also, on a side note, Tom Wang just randomly texted me asking me that question as well. <laughs> was and, this from Tom? Was this separate? No, no. Someone also had it in uh-huh. the actual Q and A. I uh, asked him ton of this. As well, when I was on uh, many, was on, many. Yeah. Uh, you know, Tanner can throw down a good hacker. Well, apparently, can. the schools, different schools, have different hackers, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So I went to three different uh, kind of schools that had hackers. So I learned three different hackers over the years. There's probably a video out there on on YouTube somewhere. I committed. If you if you had to, it was, if, if I love doing them. If yeah, you had to fun. do your own hacker now before a race, which one would you choose? <laughs> honestly i i couldn't remember any of them but the my last high school one was is what i would it only wouldn't take me long to relearn it um gotta bring it up well, we, so we would have like hacker competitions like like house like if you have a house sport we would like house rugby house Makes hockey sense. house so we would have house hacker competitions people well, gotta look it up what, would, um, what was the all blacks like fa- famous hacker what one is that called? yeah they every time okay. uh, they got two kamati Kamati is the one like Kamati, Kamati, and then the one where they go down on the knees, the long ones. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. They that, just do what about this one? They do for big games. I'll never forget when I was a little kid. I was watching because the haka like is intimidating. No one can deny that it's an intimidating thing when you got big blokes doing it. Big blokes from New Zealand um, doing the haka. But the interesting thing was Australia thought, you know what? We're not afraid. We're going to go and move straight up to them while we're in their face while they're doing the haka. Do you remember this? Well, other countries have done that as well. The Wallabies were doing this in one of the test matches. Test, I don't I know. The English have done that. Yeah, so they, they did it and they walked up. And, as, who was the... Is it not Sonny? When they sing Waltzy Matilda? <laughs> nah. Dude, that'd be fucking sweet if they did. Um, did they sing in the stadium? Waltzy Probably. Matilda? Or yeah. is it the other one? No, Waltzy Matilda's the one yeah, they yeah. sing a lot, yeah. But they went up to like they all moved up together in a like a huddle, long line huddle, and they went up to the to the Kiwis performing the haka. We got smashed forty two nil. That was like the, that was probably gonna happen. Yeah, right now, I, <laughs> I love how this is Tanner's new uh, race line. That I was, haven't seen it. What's his start it? line thing? Like when the camera pans, he goes like this. There's a haka start line. It's pretty, that's he did that for Com Games. Like, are you, are you gonna do that? At, uh, at your first no, race? Gonna, I'm not gonna steal his. No, yeah. but you can do one like that. Your own version of Stick it. Stick your tongue out. <laughs> Dude, that'd be sick. That'd be very intimidating. No, the haka is sweet though. If, if people don't know what we're talking about, look H- it up. H A K A. Look it up on. Look up the All Blacks doing it. Look on, up George Beamish haka. Look up George Beamish doing it, and then look at the All Blacks doing it. Compare them. Uh, it's <laughs> compare the pair. It's it's amazing to see it happen before a massive, ten, intense sports match. So very sick. Hopefully, George brings it out at a race soon. Would love to see that. Uh, Can next, you do it after winning a race, or would that be weird? It's more of a pre pre thing. Thing makes sense. Yeah, it's got to happen before. It's got to happen before. Then. It's just the it's just the way it is. Uh, next one, favorite Lord of the Ring character. Oh, I know mine. It's pretty obvious. Go ahead, Sam Gamgee. Sam, where's Gan- That's a really good like, pick. The thing is, Gandalf is pick, Gandalf yeah. is up there for sure. Like, I mean, that's an amazing character. But I love Sam Wise because it's like friend- the friendship between him and Frodo, mm-hmm. and he's just so pure to me. I also like him because he's just yeah, I don't know. He's just he, he's just he's just a good time. He definitely lights awesome. me up, makes me feel good. He touches you in the touches right spots. Me in the right spots. What's yours, Mon? Mine is definitely Legolas. But I think that's mostly just because he's just so cool in the movies and Orlando Bloom just like looks so hot playing him. <laughs> Honestly, you tell you who's also a sleeper pick. I, I don't want to take your pick away from you. From- All right, I'll go quick. I, it used to be Legolas when I watched it because I thought the Bon Arrows was sick. Yeah. But now I'm, I'm honestly, Ollie is a big Lord of the Rings fan here. I'm, I'm 
not very. I don't even know if I've seen all the movies. What? Um, I love... Yeah. But I like... Mary and Pippin? Mary and Pippin, yeah. They're good. Yeah, that duo. The, sleep, the, the, duo? the sleeper pick for they're me, fine. and it's named after... He's named after a cat of, of our friend, Zack Snyder. Gimli. Yeah. Gimli is probably an amazing... He's an amazing character in the books as well. Legolas, is, there's not much of Legolas in the books, really. He's a bit plain. Gimli, fucking amazing in the movies. Amazing in the books. Gandalf, you know. Gandalf has got... The Gandalf-Dumbledore argument is like they're both old, wise men who have beautiful views of the world and see the best in small people to create big things. That's like the whole idea of it. Um, but I do love Sam Wise because he just, you know, he freaking, he was the gardener. He wasn't even like, he was a gardener of a guy who had to go and like take a ring into Mordor. Pretty much was going to die. It was a suicide mission and he did it with him and he was committed to bringing him back. He had a pot and pan. He'd try and cook for him all the time. It was Dude, awesome. When I was younger, I would be so jealous of like the stew that he made. <laughs> I was like, man, I want to eat that so bad. You know what I always wanted to try? Is it called limb bread? What's the... Oh, that's the elven bread. Yeah. It's, elven bread. It's the one you take one bite and then you're full. Lavish bread. Yeah. It's, it's apparently, it? it's really good for traveling. Elves don't eat too much. So... The, <laughs> all he knows all the lore. I, well, people might correct me on this because people might know more than me, but elves don't eat too much. Like they're pretty, they're very, very sophisticated, kind of a bit snobbish. They've gotten past they eating. Immortal? Yeah, they are, they're immortal. Yeah. They'll do it. They can only be yeah. killed. Like they can live for unless they um, marry a mortal and die of a broken heart, which is what Aragorn Elwin did. Um, because like if you marry a mortal man and you make that decision to be with a mortal man, there's like repercussions, which means you die. You die of a broken heart, which is there's all this law and J A R talking. Uh, let's talk about it. Anyway, <laughs> getting back to it, hobbits love eating. That's the whole thing about hobbits. They're very homely. They love to have like. They just what love about having a good, they just love having a good time. They're having a good time. They eat a lot, and uh, dwarves are the same. So with the lambent spread, it was quite funny. There's a there's a scene in the book um, where Legolas. I think it's in the films too, but it might have been cut. It might be an extended edition. Legolas says he goes lambent spread. This will like take one bite of this, you'll be full for a day. And then Pippin and Mary are just sitting there and he goes, how many did you eat? And he goes, seven. <laughs> <laughs> I do remember that. So th- like, it's, yeah, They're I so love good. all the rings. I'm, I'm actually thinking about rereading the books, particularly The Hobbit. The Hobbit's a great I've never read them before. I need to get to them. I was going to say, some, particularly you two that are fantasy like, buffs. I'm not even like that read long. all the rings. Like, Lord of the Rings is not even that long. For no, like it's movies. very dense with information. But once it, the story gets moving. the book? Uh, I have it at home. Hmm. We get I, I think no. Did we? Did I buy the Hobbit? I'm not sure. It might be in the bookshop. Upstairs. I've read the Hobbit. I haven't read the big one. The Hobbit's great. Yeah, Hobbit is great. Um, this just made me remember last week. Someone flamed us for spoiling Game of Thrones. Did we spoil it, dude? T- someone was fucking mad. I can't remember I if we spoiled we it. Oh, well, I think maybe because we said that the okay, ending, we're the spoil ending it of the again books. Right now. Yeah. <laughs> The end oh, of the book, no, we someone did, we did spoil yeah, it. Yeah, somebody died at the end of the book. Yeah, because we, we said what where the who, books were up to. Who but the fuck hasn't seen yeah, that? who hasn't who hasn't read that yet? That's the problem. Well, like, no, who hasn't or se- seen, up seen to it? it? It came out years ago. You yeah. can't complain about a spoiler. We did. Spoil I think it. They, they're talking about the spoilers in the books, right? But also, like the books have been out for fucking years. Like you should have read I'm them. And assume, so is the show. I'm going to assume that we did a spoiler warning. No, we, we didn't. Oh, we did. We did. Okay. Apologies. So, apologies on us, but also the person that's upset about that spoiler, you should have read them already. Come on. Chop, chop. Seriously, you're living in the past. Living in the past, mate. Get into it. But it's anyway, 2022. Th- there's a lot of other things we didn't spoil, so just look forward to that. We I didn't spoil everything. I didn't mention that I was watching Clarkson's Farm in my thing. Is there, is there, is there like another season? Yeah, another you know, season? You know, I've already he's, finished it. He's come up with a beer, you know that, right? Yeah, a Hawks, lager. Hawks have, you, have you seen the, the advertisement <laughs> so for it? Funny. He's sitting there. He opens up a beer. He takes a sip and he goes. There's nothing better than starting your day than a Hawkson's lager. Goodbye, dear. And he puts the beer down and goes to work, and she's just sitting there on the couch. Such a funny uh, commercial. Anyway, That'll be us one day. Tyson's Farm. Dude, Amazon, Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime. Great show. Uh, yeah. Also, Ted Lasso. Ted, Ted Lasso. Ted Lasso episode two. I haven't seen it yet. You slacking? I'm slacking. I haven't seen episode one. I'm saving them up for now. Are you gonna? Do you gonna Excuse binge them? Mm, I'll probably just catch up at some point when when the time feels right. When I finish Attack on Titan. But <laughs> bless, bless you. you. Uh, oh, we got a couple of other good ones. One, do you guys want one more good one to finish us off today? Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. This is a great question. Thank you for whoever sent this in. If you had to be coached by one of your teammates starting today, who would you pick? Oh, I, I, I'm pretty... I mean, there's, there's one I want to and then there's one I should. What are they? 
the person I'd love to coach me would be Yared because he's so <laughs> chill. Like we would, we would just be cruising. Everything would be relaxed, and you know, oof. but it it'd also, be relaxed until it isn't. Because yeah. he also just loves sprinting. Yeah, it it'd be very very intense. Um, that's the person I think would be fun to be coached by. But the person I'd want to coach me is probably Morgan, just because. Now hear me out. This is because Morgan has been by my side through this journey <laughs> for many years. And so Morgan, Morgan kind of tick. knows how I tick, how I function as a human being as well as a professional runner. So like if I'm desperately needing somebody to coach me and to be able to keep the trajectory that I'm at, I think Morgan's the guy to fit those shoes. I'll do it. Let's do it right now. Yeah. <laughs> Sign me up. Should I call Ritz? Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> you going where? We're trying something out, Ritz. Bear with us. I think the 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 most effective long term solution. Mike Smith. <laughs> I think I would go with Mario. Yeah, it, Mario's very like he's very yeah. down pat. He's like scheduled out. I think he would do the most behind the scenes work. <laughs> he's also yeah, pretty he's passionate. Also, Mario's like just good to hang around with. Like, yeah, good presence, Mario. Very level headed. Yeah, good presence. Yeah, I think Mario. I was thinking like Mario and joe are good picks in terms of they pay a lot of attention yeah they're they're paying mm-hmm. a lot joe of attention. would be kind of scary though yeah i think i'd be scared of joe coaching me. i think I'd... joe would have a bit of ritz syndrome <laughs> <laughs> where he he finds it hard to because he's put himself through so much pain and suffering as an athlete he, he doesn't have much sympathy for you when he's coaching you he's like uh, yeah, go out and do like a 10 mile threshold. Yeah. Like, that's, that's you do a 10 mile threshold, he goes, <laughs> Back up, I did this back in the days when I was running 4.30 and I wasn't even breathing. He's, He's like, like, Oh, well, I'm barefoot. not like that. He's just, just, just barefoot. I was wearing a shit pair of shoes. He loves talking about what they did back the in the day. Yeah, I mean, Alicia would also be terrifying because I think Alicia can feel pain like no one else. So tough. she would expect you to be able to do shit that she can do, which is yeah. like just almost impossible for me. Yeah. My one is tough because I, I see myself as someone that's very high maintenance. So I don't know if I would want to burden <laughs> anyone with coaching me. I feel like I could coach you. I would say one of you two. Yeah. Just because I think I think uh, I think we can to do- coach me yeah. it helps to like really more understand me on like a personal level. Actually and we could be a duo. It could be a duo. <laughs> team coaching. Because because We'd really you could be the each other out. I could be the over emotional, like just super like you know, good, good cop, bad cop. Good co- and then Jordy could be the level-headed, kind of very, very structured, That's also the outlook team. person. And I'd be the passionate in the now, and you'd be in the future. That's the dream team. Um, I think that would work. I think so as well. I think that would be a very good coaching situation for me. Uh, let if you us- need some coaching, uh, yeah, I was going to touch. Say, we'll do coffee club coaching. Coffee club coaching. Let us know in the comments if yeah. we sold out and we started uh, coaching, doing a little ha- hammer and axe. Shout out to Tim then. <laughs> type uh scenario it's would a you grand hire a, us as your coach yeah it's a grand a month um no <laughs> refunds no, no refunds you and get one phone call you get one phone call a month with, also with you get <laughs> you get one 30 hour stint no not 30 hour 30 minute stint with gus uh a month that's pretty good yeah people that's don't pay for just good. that <laughs> you get 30 minutes stint with gus that's the emotional support aspect yeah. of the coaching right mm-hmm. there yeah. but uh we did actually have an idea at one point to have a recurring segment on the show where we all coached someone individually and then we had a goal in mind say like in 10 weeks from now we're racing a 10k a 5k and we every week like up, updated like how our, our athletes training was going so if anyone would like to be part of that program reach out to let us, us know. Yeah. <laughs> let us know and we'll start coaching you to get you to be really fast at the 5k so yeah i think that was a 100 well, <laughs> whatever event you want honestly shot Wait, port long let's, jump let's do 100 meters that'd be so fun <laughs> training for the 100 yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, whatever what do we know <laughs> but I think that's a nice nice place to end the show we did um, a little bit of questions sprinkled in there with uh, a bunch of other stuff that was going on well seasoned yeah anything, well seasoned else? Episode. anything else from us um, episode 79 yo I, I do have to say something I was going through scrolling through our YouTube today and i looked at all our old thumbnails our our studio set up at our old place was so much better mm. like with the painting in the background the painting in the background so nice and then also <laughs> just because you could get a nice front on angle with the camera so yeah. we'd all be around we'd be on both if sides the, of the table if the camera was here and then we left this window open could you see the mountains in the back no <laughs> no i can't even see them with my eyes <laughs> oh, <beautiful. laughs> you can see a bit of, bit of it in the air. so 
I think the the I think the ideal thing for us would be to get a to, studio. Yeah, I think when someone s- tells us to fix our lighting once a week. Well, that's that's <laughs> like the main reason why I want to get merch out. Which I guess we could technically just crowdfund this money, but I would feel bad doing that. I'd like to have merch out just so that we can buy studio lighting and maybe a backdrop. I also want one of those mics that you can move like this. Yeah, like and on better the pole. mics. Yeah, we'll have them set up. Four the kudos have pretty cool mics. I want those. See, they mics. have a nice little studio yeah. set up, and they got the lighting, and they got. I think they got two cam. I don't know. Who's well, what, this is show. what's gonna happen. Our gym is too small now. Like it's just objectively <laughs> too fucking small. So we're gonna use that gym as our coffee club headquarters, and then they can move into the Domino's move. or something. Yeah, we're gonna take over Domino's next yeah. door. We just gave away the location of our gym. Shit. No, nah, they don't know which There's Domino's. a lot of Domino's. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> Domino's around here. Um, we, and the the rent bill will just keep going on. <laughs> yeah, we just ran, we just we just built. Oh, well, uh, I guess the one thing we could do is we could make an agreement. We will talk about an on running shoe for like a couple minutes before every podcast with the beans, and then they can pay for the rent. For the this episode is Beautiful. sponsored by the Cloud Surfer. <laughs> Feels like waves. <laughs> <laughs> actually, though, the Cloud Surfer is a pretty good shoe. We all really like available it. now. <laughs> <laughs> we actually do. This is not, not a joke. Onrunning.com. Onrunning.com. Get the Cloud Surfer. It's do, pretty good. We do really like it. I, I do love it. And it looks sick as well. Like it's a good the, shoe. The new colors are really um, nice. I do enjoy it quite a bit. Is it as good as the Cloud X uh, 2020? Me and George <laughs> Beamish uh, rocking that shoe for the doubles. <laughs> Who's to say? Do we love that shoe? We used to run that shoe all the time. I miss it. I miss it too. It doesn't exist anymore. So yeah. Funny. Funny, funny, yeah. funny. All right. Well, I think uh, before we say anything more, that'll get us in trouble. What do you mean? We have this episode cancelled. I think it's a nice place to end. We no, we've been talking really well. I thought about <laughs> no, everything. We've done good. We've done good. We've done no good. one's even listening at this point. No, no one's listening at this point. Yeah. Whoever's listening at this point, um, we love you. You need to find another hobby. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, like get a life. Uh, uh, yeah. No, nah, kid, we love you. Thank you, for, thank you, thank you for coming this far with us. Yeah. Find God. Um, no, <laughs> Kanye West. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much, everyone, for listening making it all the way here. Uh, We appreciate you guys a lot. That was episode 79. I think uh, hopefully we see you again next week. We'll do a little more Q&A. But until then, take care. Thank you.